Hey everyone, this is Fiona. Uh, this is a clean version of Aeon Knox from Git, which I just updated this morning. Okay. We'll start by going to the system settings for skin. Under general, the enable auto scrolling for plot and review setting is defaulted on. And this essentially allows the text to scroll when there is more text than that's available in the box, and it will scroll automatically after a few seconds. Play trailers in full screen. I believe you should enable this because otherwise the trailer might play behind functions of the skin. We'll go to set paths to music library. In doing that, you would then select the path to where your music is stored, so the root directory to where it's stored. And then just click OK, and that sets everything up for your clear logos, etc. Now, kiosk mode. As you can see, there's a couple of different options for it. I like to keep things in kiosk mode because I'm always hitting for the quick menu and that side menu. But when you're configuring, it's best to set it as no, because there's some functions for configuring that are only found in these menus. For view types, this is where you can disable available view types. Now, after you get everything set up, you might want to disable view types you don't use. It makes things a little cleaner and easier to navigate, but for obvious purpose of this demo, we'll keep this enabled. Now, customizer. We'll start at the bottom with video OSD settings. Select this. Show video info when playing is paused. Now, I'm going to enable this. If you disable it and leave it disabled, then the pause button is clean and sparse. But I like having the video info on there, especially, essentially it's almost the same as hitting I when playing the video. I'll show you on that later. Now, down at the bottom shows remaining time duration instead of duration. That's self-explanatory. I think it's pretty neat to see how much time is remaining in the film rather than how long it's been playing. It's usually more relevant to have somewhere to go or something. For subtitle add-on, just select that and you can choose the add-on that you use for subtitles, in my case, XBMC subtitles. Now, moving up to the music setting, you can choose the background customizer. I like to set this as artist slideshow, but you can set this whatever way you like. Now, artist slideshow means it will look at the artist and will scrape images of that artist and play them while music's playing. I think it's rather neat, actually. So we'll just use that. OK. CD art is where you can choose, if there is no CD art, what images you use for spinning it around. I'll show you more on those later. But more importantly, the bottom for lyric add-on, choose your, well, lyrics add-on. In my case, see you lyrics. Now, the top bar. I'll show you the top bar by disabling it. That that disappeared is the top bar. Now, we'll make it classical. There you go. And we'll enable the left side. Now, you have two options for the left side. You can, use, uh, you can do RSS feed or breadcrumbs. We'll leave it on breadcrumb because that's probably the more useful for the demo because then you can see where I am, etc. We'll go to show weather. And as you can see, quite nice out at the moment. And now playing would show on the left-hand side as well. These three settings here are basically for change in color and transparency and so on. Now, we'll leave that as is. And you can experiment with that on your own as well. I don't use that, so I wouldn't be too fluent in it. But next, anyway, we'll go to custom home window furniture. We'll start with the RSS feed down at the bottom. We select that, or you can disable it, and you'll see it disappears. And you can change kind of what it looks like. See, it has sort of a gray look to it. I like this one, but that's quite nice too. And you can choose where it's located. Now, it defaults underneath the main menu, but if you select it, it can go all the way down to the bottom. But we'll keep it underneath the main menu. Now, going to the sub menu, you basically have a couple of options. You can disable it, or you can move it up to the top, or leave it where it is left and right. Operate the same way. You can disable it, move it to the top, or shorten its view. And the main system, there's a few features. We'll start at the bottom. You can make it so submenus always displayed. 
You can kind of change the styles. There you see, we'll keep it on Knox though. You can make it a bit smaller, where I think it looks quite nice. And interestingly, a new feature's been added where you can change the icons. Um, I think the icons are rather cute myself. I'm going to leave them on labels, but there are a lot of icons and you can customize these to your liking. Now, I like to keep the position low, but for the demo, we're going to move it to the default, which is kind of in the middle. And we're pretty much done with that. Now, we'll skip out of this and we'll go into the main menu item customizer. This is rather cool, I think. Okay, you might notice that things are a little slow and stuttering a bit, but that's simply because I have a video capturing running in the background, so it's kind of slow. Slowing my machine down a little. Um, it's actually much more fluid than this. So if you see it kind of stuttering a bit, don't be alarmed. It's just simply my machine being slow because it, it's, it's trying to handle running both applications. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Now going down to the sub-menu here, you'll see a lot of X's on custom. Basically, these won't show. So where there's a big X running through the text, we're not going to show up. So let's say you want to put an add-on or a favorite or something here. We'll just select it. Okay, so again, my machine just being a little slow. And you'll get this menu here and enable it, and then that lets you choose the type. Now, we'll go to the music add-ons and we'll select radio, which is really quite nice add-on, actually. I think radio is a nice uh, name, so I think we'll keep this for the label. You can choose the background if you so are inclined. Now, see how custom one? It just changed to radio. Now, you could go up twice and then it will show the now playing widget, which shows up when music's playing. And you can make all your different adjustments here. Now, I'm just going to leave those on default because I like them, but you can really make a lot of changes here. You can change the playlist widget to the artist slideshow rather than the 10 entries. It should be pretty self-explanatory. You can play around with these features, but they're there anyway. Now, if you select the main menu and go to music, this is where you can make a lot of different changes. You can change the icon. Remember how I showed a moment ago where you can have icons in addition to the labels? Here's where you could do it. And you can do custom icons as well. I mean, there's a lot you can do here. We'll just keep this as it is. But as you can see, there is no short supply of icons. Now, you can choose your background. Okay, your background, there's also a lot of features. For instance, I can look at my latest live CD cases, which is a new feature that's rather cool. If I select that, I can say uh, random albums. So it will put them there. Now, maybe I don't want those random albums or I don't really like that, so maybe I'll put them down to my, say, music fan art, which works quite well also. Now, let's look at the widgets. The widgets are actually pretty class. I can say I want to look at a random album, or I can change the different styles. Now, we'll just keep it in classical for the moment, and let's say for my second widget, um, say I wanted to put down my most played albums, and those I'll do in panel mode. Okay. We'll exit out of that and we'll go to movies. Okay. Now, again, it's the same kind of thing. You can go to your sub menu, and I like cinema add on, but say there's stuff I don't want, like I'm never really interested in the latest film I've added, or I'll just go. So, if that's the case, I'll just go to X and X those out. Same with years. I really am not interested in browsing my films by years, so I'll just X that out. 
Now, in the movies, it's the same kind of thing. We have different types of widgets. We have the in-progress widgets, so stuff you've just started but never completed. It's kind of handy. Let's just for a second say random movies, perhaps. We'll say put it in panel view, just to give an indication. And there, let's say for background, I can choose video fan art. Okay. But that's going to show television shows too. Now that might be more appropriate for the video menu. If you want to keep your video menu, so maybe I'll just say latest movies. As you can see, uh, some some nice background fan art is uh, that that fan art there is kind of grainy. So maybe I'll just go to multi image and select a folder that I created a long while back before these features were available. That had some nice high quality movie backgrounds. Now we'll go. There we go. I'll just kind of randomly pick one, and that's kind of nice. Now, now TV shows, same kind of thing. We can go to the widgets, and we will say recommended and uh, it will recommend some shows perhaps we'll keep it in that view or we could say go to the second widget let's get some random episodes in there and we have some random television episodes that are available now there you go okay moving along Okay, we'll just continue on here. Whoops. Okay. Now, let's say you want to get rid of one of those main menu items, for example, featured. I don't really use that. So just go select it and hit disabled. And when you exit out of it, it will have a big X through it. And you won't see it. Now, let's say though you did want to have an item on here that wasn't present, like an add-on or a favorite or even a type. We'll just untick disabled, go to choose type, and as you can see, we have predefined functions even. You could have it shut down if you want, or go straight to cinema experience, or random films, or whatever. For me here, we'll go to, uh, we'll go to programs, and maybe global search, and then we'll change the label from global search to just search. That's quite nice, let's do that. Now, maybe we'll change the icon, because I don't really like that icon, to say their compass. And then maybe we'll change the background, and we'll use the Daily Bay widget or something. Okay, there we go. Okay, or maybe not that, actually. Maybe this is a better one. Uh, have a look at this. We'll do the live DVD cases and we'll do random movies. And there we go. Now, let's say we want to still look at the Daily Babes. Um, we can select the widget this way. There you go. Now, we'll exit out of that. And as you can see, it went from... We'll go there. Now, as you can see, it went from custom one to search. Now, there's a relevant system widget that we can pick here called system info. Now, one thing to note about the system info is that when it's saying how much disk space is free, it hasn't actually been updated to kind of the new Knox theme. And I believe just pulling the, it's just pulling the data from one drive. Because I do have one drive that has 93% free, but it's not the drive that Knox is sitting on. And it's not really the overall synopsis of all my drives. So if you see that percentage there, don't get overly confident or alarmed, depending on what it says. Sometimes it will say 3% free, depending on what server I've enabled. So just kind of a note, take a note on that. But the rest, uh, the rest of the info there is, is kind of fun to look at. 